Good evening. This is Liz Whitaker of Divination Station, and this is Divination Station TV on Three of Cups Divine Arts. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give everyone just a moment to pop in. I am a couple minutes late, so I do apologize for that. Um, I did have a last minute appointment, so that was exciting. Um, so go ahead and once you do um, join, go ahead and drop your uh, name, where you're from, uh, pronouns in the comments. Hi, Jenna. And I will go ahead and start to share this out now. So I'm sharing it on my page. Um, and if you do go ahead and share it, um, hashtag shared, and I'll get you a card at the end of the um, at the end of the broadcast. All right, how is everybody's Mercury retrograde going? Um, it has definitely been, it's been okay for me personally so far, um, but I do know that some people have been having some, definitely been having some issues. And I will share it on my, there we go, okay. Jacqueline Lawrence, hi Jack. Jacqueline, I don't know if you go by Jackie, I don't wanna assume. Um, but yeah, if you are, if it is your first time joining, um, go ahead and drop where you're from and pronouns in the comments. Um, also, if you are on your tarot journey, I would like to know where you're at. Hello, Paige. And maybe what deck you're working with. Um, so I'm just going through my deck here and pulling out the cards that we're going to be talking about first. And of course, we are on justice today, or not justice, we're on the hangman. We did justice. Undecided. Perfect. Jackie is fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So welcome to Divination Station, brought to you by True Paranormal, the podcast. I'm Liz Whitaker, your host for this broadcast. Today, we will be discussing the hangman, and I will be following up with some sample readings. So we'll be doing one card. Once you share out, hashtag shared, I'm getting a list going and I'll get to you. Um, I try to do it in the order that you did share. Um, if you're watching the replay, um, please hashtag replay. That helps me um, know that people are watching the replays and it helps me get to your comments. Um, last week, I know there were some issues with the audio and um, on that end. So definitely, if the audio does go out, just pop or I cut out, pop back in. Um, you can always catch the replay uh, for a more cohesive broadcast. Okay. So we have a couple already. Akashka, hello. Ashley, hello. Caitlin, Mary Lou. Perfect. Um, all right. So don't forget to, once you join, um, like. Wow React. Um, tag your friends if you think they'd be interested. It helps our organic reach and helps you know people find us. And we like that. Okay. So we are talking about just or wow, I keep saying justice. We are talking about the hangman today. So the hangman, I always think the card doesn't quite look as intense as the name indicates. So the hanged man comes after justice. The decision of justice has been made. What do we do now? Instead of rushing into that next big thing that we often feel compelled to do, why don't we take a pause? Why don't you wait a minute, see what the repercussions are from that that decision that justice has rendered. Um, it, why don't we wait for a minute? Carla, hello. Um, the card itself is represented by Neptune and the element of water. It does not have a zodiac correspondence like some of the previous ones we've had. 
but it is very Neptune and water, which falls right into Pisces, where we're at, in retrograde, which also means pause. Um, I love it. I mean, totally thought it was reverse. There we go. So if you reverse the hangman, it looks like he's doing a bit of a jig. Um... Yeah, so the hangman himself kind of has a dreamy, kind of like head in the clouds kind of expression and feel. Like if you, again, turn him that way, he looks kind of content. Like he's not really stressed at hanging upside down. Uh, the figure is often depicted with a serene, dreamy look. And he's not really troubled by the predicament that he seems to be in. Um, again, when you turn him upside down, it actually looks like he's like dancing. He's doing a little bit of a jig. Um, the tree, the tree is said to represent the world tree. So most mythologies, you know, will have Yggdrasil in Norse mythology. We'll have the world tree. Um, oh, I can't remember what those big trees are in like Asian culture, not the bonsai, the Bodhi tree. Um, so every culture will have something like that though. So he, the hanged man is suspended in this world tree. Yes. St. Paul was crucified upside down. It's actually where the symbol of the, um, upside down cross comes from. So he thought it was, uh, profane for him to be crucified upright as Jesus Christ was. So this is actually also, it, it does reflect back to that too. Um, this pose was also how they um, hung, hanged traitors in Italy. Uh, the kind of one foot up kind of, kind of thing. Uh, the tree is very much alive and it can look like he's dancing on the other side. Surrendering to a tune that we cannot hear. You know, he has almost, he has that sun, those sun rays coming from his head. It's surrender. The hanged man is surrendering. Surrendering to his fate, surrendering to his foes. There's a fine line between surrendering to the universe and being a martyr or playing a victim to your circumstance. So the hanged man is not a victim. The hanged man is not a martyr. But there is that fine line. So we can, when we surrender to the universe, when we really go with the flow, there is an amount of surrender. We surrender control over the future surroundings. So where the emperor tries to, you know, really have everything in line, everything in order. The emperor tries to pull everything in. The hangman almost, almost says, let's not do that for a minute. Let's see what karma has in store. Let's see what justice has to say about it. So we have that justice card leading up and wheel of fortune before that. So there is that feeling of, of fate and karma and pause. And that's, and that's really where we're at with the hangman. Take that pause, but don't blame the pause on your circumstance. You take the pause for yourself. It is an intentional pause. It's not a forced pause. If you, We'll say Wheel of Fortune and Justice shows up in you losing your job. You know, no one, it's not going to be anybody's, for, I'm getting my chapstick in case anybody wonders what I'm rifling for here. Um, okay, it's very dry in Buffalo and I cannot drink enough water. Sorry. So when we lose that job, Instead of, you know, rushing forward to that new job, you know, kind of taking anything that we see, 
taking a pause and really looking at why did why did I lose that job? Did I hate that job? Was I secretly thrilled when I got fired? And now I can take a moment for myself and kind of take a breather and really see where I'm going. What is in my future? So instead of, hello, Valerie. Um, so instead of playing that victim and playing that, oh, woe is me, I was fired, I lost my job, and everything is going to be terrible from now on, okay, I'm not where I was, and that's okay. Take that deep breath and move forward. What, what does that Wheel of Fortune have to bring you? So we're not blaming that pause. We're taking that pause. And it usually means if you're feeling stuck, it's a time to reflect on what brought you there. What did you learn from that justice decision? How can you prevent a negative judgment in the future? Like, how can you not make that same mistake again? If the justice, if it was favorable, how can you do more of that? How can I improve on that? All right. Uh, Valerie asks, what are you missing? Um, can you clarify that a little bit? Um, I'm doing tarot lessons and we're going over the fool's journey and we're on the um, hanged man card. And we did just get a bunch of people joining in. So hello, welcome to uh, Divination Station. If you are just joining us, please drop where you're from, your pronouns in the comments, and where you are on your tarot journey, and what deck you might be working with. Um, once you do share, um, please hashtag shared, and we will get and I will get your um, one card reading for the end. Okay. So with the hangman, you know we have the power to look at our situation and improve it it's not you're not going to be stuck forever you know we're not we're not here forever um so key words the ultimate surrender sacrifice or being suspended in time it could also be breaking old patterns when we you know keep doing the same thing over and over because we don't that pause and really check in with that hi hello Erin um, that's we really need to check in and see what our patterns were we need to recognize them before we could break them and then moving forward again not making that same mistake again and really not being a victim of that pause we have control and we can move forward so when the hangman comes up in a reading, you know, again, kind of look what's going on around it. And what is after that hangman is usually the choice, you know, the, the kind of future, future feel. So what's leading up to it, the pause, and then what's moving forward. If the hangman feels like the energy doesn't really go with any of the other cards, um... I would ask about that. I would deep, if I'm doing a reading for myself, deep dive that. If you are doing a reading for someone else, ask them, did you feel stuck before you got here? What was making you feel stuck? You know, if you do have, you know, that intuitiveness, um, see what you can tune into and reflect it back to them and really kind of deep dive that. And hello, Melanie. So again, the hanged man being represented by dreamy Neptune and it's a water, um, it's a water card. So there's a lot of that emotion there and Mercury retrograde in Pisces, Pisces also being represented by Neptune. It's a really, really great time to kind of take that pause in wherever your life is kind of headed. Um, take that, do a check-in. Maybe not call it a pause, call it a check-in. Ah, Maria P. Yeah, yes. Um, so kind of do that check-in where you are 
and just kind of take a break. Um, it's something I'm really good at telling other people to do and not super good for myself because of the kind of person I am. Um, thank you, Aaron. Um, so yeah, if you do share, go ahead and comment, hashtag share, and we will get your card. I will get your card. I don't know me. Yes. So yeah, Mercury retrograde, great time to take a pause. Really not a great time to sign contracts. Not a great time to, you know, really have big, important discussions if you can help it. Life happens. Sometimes we can't avoid it. But going into the situation knowing this is a time when communication can get flipped, turned upside down. So it's a really great, really great time for that. All right, Danielle. Perfect. Yeah, go ahead, pop in the, watch the rest. Um, Danielle, thank you for sharing. All right. So yeah, when that comes up in a reading, take a check, you know, check in what's around it and get to the bottom of that pause. All right. So, um, of course, at this point we do go through and I'm going to show you different representations of the card in different decks because, you know, as we've seen, um, Melanie, thank you very much. Um, different cards can have different feels in different decks. Justice, all across the board, definitely. Um, so we're going to start off with um, Terra de Marseille. So here, you know, we have, it's almost like the, the branches are holding um, like a, a dowel or a rod. It doesn't quite have that same live tree look, but the figure is still the same you know, still has that kind of same calm look on his face. Still looks like if you flip him upside down, he's kind of doing, doing a little bit of a jig there. Um, and again, with the, the Terra de Marseille, you have those colors. So the yellow is energy, the red is vitality or passion, and blue is calm. So he's kind of a mix of all of those. And then the white is like a, a purity or a cleansing. So he's kind of a mix of all of those. And then we have Tarot of the Cat People. And I just, I love this card because it really, that cat on the top really gives that kind of serene character, the serene character. Yes, I got you. I got you, Ashley. Um, Jester outfit. Yeah, so this does have that kind of Harlequin nature of the Jester's outfit. Um, and again, with this one, I love the serene look that that cat has, you know, and then, you know, the figure again has that crown, that Corona around his head and he's just kind of hanging out. He's got the blue, he's calm. We're good. And going on to the thought. So of course, you know, here we're going to have a little bit more to talk about. We don't necessarily have that tree here. Um, we have him hanging from an onk and the onk is upside down. Um, so the onk in um, Egyptian mythology and Egyptian symbology is that life. And we have actually the does have crucifixion elements in here. There, the one foot is tied to the ankh, and then the other three are nailed. So we do have that um, reflection back to that crucifixion. Um, but in the background, it's almost, it's very geometric. It's not really organic. It doesn't have an organic feel to me, like the other cards have, where we have that tree, that living tree, um, the cat. Um, this is, it looks like graph paper. It has that very geometric idea. And then under his head, we have um, a coiled snake. So snake 
um, one of the images of the of snakes, one of the uh, interpretations is awesome. One of the interpretations is transformation, and the hanged man is like ready to transform. He's just hanging out. So when snakes shed their skin, or you know any animal that sheds its skin, um, lizards or um, spiders. Um, they will pause, you know, they will kind of withdraw. They'll be still before they shed that skin. And that's where we're at with the hangman. This is really truly that pause before we shed our skin. You know, um, awesome. We got a lot of ankh tattoos. Awesome. Um, yeah, so here we have that pause while we breathe and maybe we just breathe for a while just breathe and then we're ready to emerge we are bigger we are better we are shinier once we level up and i really love using level up as terminology for a transition for a change because we're not always just changing from one to another we are leveling up. All right, so we're right about at that halfway mark. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the um, get the promos out of the way here. Um, Divination Station is sponsored by uh, Paranormal, the podcast. Uh, Leo Rizzuti takes you on a journey into the supernatural with the mysterious, the strange, and things that simply cannot be explained. Join in by following True Paranormal, the podcast, on Facebook, where you'll be treated to spooky stories, tips for doing your own investigations, and interviews with paranormal investigators. Every week, as you catch up with Leo on True Paranormal, podcast. All right, so Danielle says, um, that cat deck really brought the home of that sacred pause. Yes. And I really think it's because that cat is just chilling and just doing the cat thing. And as I'm saying this, my my cat um, actually forces me to pause. Um, pause. Um, so he will lure me, you know, onto the uh, into bed or on the couch. And then he will do that like kind of crawl and like plop thing. So he actually forces me to pause because I need that. So he's kind of my, he knows when I need to chill. All right, most, yeah, level up, I love it. Um, so we've kind of gotten through our, you know, kind of all the decks we look at every week. So now we're gonna look at some, some fun ones. Um, I do have the Modern Witch. The hanged one. So taking that gender out. You know, I love like the tree really has that really it, it's like a it's like a tire swing tree. Um, if you ever grew up, you know, with a nice like backyard in the country, you know, nice giant tractor tied up on into a tree. It seems so dangerous now. Like I look at those and yeah, I'm like, that is a danger on a string. Uh, but yes, Doodles, every day is Catter Day. Doodles is my black cat. He is 17 pounds of pure, lazy, cuddly bliss, and I love him. So this is the hanged one upside down. So again, you know, we have that Corona feel. We got a really cute outfit. <laughs> so this is the modern witch deck, and I love this deck very um it's fairly intersectional kind of takes a look at janice yes made it for alive melanie says grounding yes um so i also have um the barbara walker deck and this one definitely looks like that jester outfit we just have the red and the white and then we have the grapes 
And grapes always remind me of um, Dionysus. And I know, and this also has that idea of the kind of the pole in between two trees instead of just hang, hanging on one tree. Tantalus. This kind of reminds me of Tantalus with the grapes and the hanging. Uh, Mary Lou says, being not athletic to hand from one leg is a bit of pain. Tranquil, yes, a tranquil pause would be sitting on a branch or bench. Vicenta, hello. I do also have Carol of the Pagan Cats. And this is the little mini deck. So this, this cat is definitely, he's kind of being a little rascal. He's on the curtains, you know, kind of look like looks like he's doing that uh, that downward dive there. Oh my gosh, I love how uh, in this deck the artwork is the different suits, and the rest of the deck is on the floor. I love that. <laughs> and did I also hello. <laughs> So, and this is a deck I literally just got today, um, delivered to my office, and this is the Micah Ulrich. Um, it's a really um, artistic deck. Where is it? So this is the the Flux Arcana Tarot by artist Micah Ulrich, and this is a the artwork in it is amazing. Cassidy, hello. So this is the Hangman and the Flux Arcana deck. So it's predominantly black and white. And this we have that we have that um, snake imagery as well. And a little bit more like a skeletal feel hanging on that sword. But the you know the the around there looks looks like that tree. So if we flip this one upside down, you know, still has that same look. And we have that sword there instead of the tree. So this is um, literally just opened it before I came on here. So I'm really excited to kind of dive into this deck. Um, and I do have... Do I have any decks that are just made for Arcana? Yes, I do. Um, I have a deck that is by another um, artist. Um, he is a tattoo artist. And I can't remember. Bailey, Bailey Illustrations is the name of the deck. Um, let me just double check that. But I have his, his deck. And it is all majors. Some decks. I don't care for the minors so much, so I will pull the majors out and just use the majors. Um, I have done that with a deck before, um, so you can you, you can do that as well. Oh, hold on one second. Yes, I'm taping. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Bailey Illustrations is the name of that uh, major artist that I have. Do I usually use it just like a regular deck? Yeah. Sometimes I'll use it as a clarifying deck if just to add a little bit more to it. Um, I have used it for readings, usually if I'm doing a, a smaller, like a three card reading, but keeping in mind it's going to be those major, those bigger energies. So yeah, if you um, have that um, full Egyptian tarot deck, but it was just the majors, play around with it for a while. Pull some cards, um, see how they interact with you, um, see if you can use them in conjunction with other readings to clarify or a um, like a higher energy, like a step up energy. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so if you're using it and you pull 
I'm just, this is just on the top here. So if you pull this and you're like, what is the higher energy that I'm battling? You know, whatever. And you pull it and have that major arcana energy explain the minor arcana energy. Um, please let me know if that makes sense, Ashley. <laughs> Um, and I can maybe, we can maybe get into that a little bit deeper, um, later. Maligros, yeah, you got me. And Mary Lou said it, it's like hanging from a leg snare. Yes. And you just have to wait till someone down, until someone cuts you down. Yes. And I, I like that a lot, Mary Lou. I like that, I like that explanation a lot. You, you're kind of waiting for someone to come down and like, and release you. Um, so the last card that I do have to kind of look at is the um, Tarot of Delphi. And this one is the one torn asunder. So the painting here is nymphs, nymphs finding the head of Orpheus. So we have the head of Orpheus floating there. We have the two nymphs bending down and finding the head of Orpheus. So I am going to read you the, the, the blurb from the book because it explains a lot. So um, Orpheus is a sacrificial figure symbolizing mythic transformation. So it goes right along with um, the keywords of the hangman. Um, after ecstatic Dionysian uh, maenads tear Orpheus asunder, they toss his lyre and his head, um, still singing, into a river. Um, so Orpheus, you know, plays the lyre, he sings his musical, um, Orpheus in the Underworld, uh, recovered by nymphs. His head becomes an oracle so powerful that for a time it silences all others, including the oracle at Delphi. While the hermit questions society and one's place in it, Orpheus questions quests for metaphysical insight and one's place in the existential universe. Um, rite of passage, sacrifice, drifting, floating, metamorphosis. Brian, hello. Yes, Orpheus and Eurydice. Um, so with the one torn asunder, um, I mean, Orpheus is in that he, he's paid the, the ultimate price. He's paid the ultimate price for his art, um, and he is turned into an oracle. But in the meantime, you know, he's... He's an existential head floating in the river. So he kind of has to pause. Yes, maenads are, are definitely fascinating and terrifying. Um, and my left ear just started ringing like crazy. So definitely thinking someone has um, a spirit guide or someone with them right now. Because my ear just started ringing like crazy. And Ashley says, a little obsessed with Hades Town right now. I love it. Um, so that's wrapping up the um, the Hanged Man or the Hanged One. And thank you very much for sticking around. Um, if you have shared, and I, I do not, um, what was this deck again? It's Tarot of Delphi. Um, I believe it is out of print. Um, I actually got it from a neighborhood um, buy nothing group. Um, so I'm really, I feel really lucky that I snagged it. Um, so as far as shares go right now, I want to make, make ahead. Everybody has a chance to share. Um, I have Jenna, I have Caitlin, Ashley, Aaron, Danielle, and Melanie. Um, if you have shared um, and I did not say your name, please just pop in the comments. Um, I'm trying to keep Okay, so last week, I'll go over, uh, quickly go over our tarot forecast. Last week, we had the Two of Cups. We had the Fool. We had the Eight of Wands. So a lot of action. Um, which I, I, you know, I mentioned uh, last week that Mercury retrograde is not always best for action, but sometimes it just has to happen. Just has to be that way. Um, and the fool. 
So for me, this past week was really checking in and not moving forward and not really, you know, kind of getting carried away with these energies. So that was, that was kind of how it affected me. Um, you know, was looking at my calendar for this week and realizing I can't plan anything else and moving into next month. Um, all right. It, Mary, did you share? Is that why you were raising? Just want to make sure. And hello, Yolanda. So with these, um, just make sure, you know, check in with your partnerships, make sure they're all going well, and try not to move too fast. Um, so I am going to go ahead and give the cards a shuffle, and we'll do, give everybody a little, little bit more chance. Malegro said, I took action on love with a Gemini. How's that working out so far? I love Gemini's. And I don't. Yes. Um, I will say Aaron is probably one of my, is my, one of my longest um, friends, one of my oldest friends. Um, and we have been friends since we were 14 and 15, which was a very long time ago. And she is definitely one of my favorite Gemini's. So Gemini love. Um, I have had a couple of relationships with Gemini's that have not been so successful. So Gemini's are great until they're not. Um, as an Aries, I find Gemini's energy very fun, very stimulating, very, our energies go well together for a while. It's actually different. Awesome. Perfect. And, you know, maybe catching a Gemini and Mercury retrograde is exactly what I was doing wrong. Um, I would be interested in um, what your uh, what your astrological sign is, Milagros. See what, what kind of pairing you guys have. All right. So we'll do three cards for the week it's gonna be queen of wands take up space do your thing don't be afraid don't let anybody and Malagor says I'm a Virgo he's a Gemini okay so he's matching your energy love it so this week take up space do your thing Queen of Wands is also known as the Witch Queen. So really kind of tap into that energy and let it shine. So it's action, but it's really just bursting from within kind of came to mind, but that's very um, analog. So um, really just let your inner light shine. Two of Cups, again, okay. So, really check in with your relationships. Clarify, clarify, clarify. Um, really pay attention to those romantic partnerships. And nine of wands. So nine of wands can definitely can definitely happen when. Um, we're either not prepared for Mercury retrograde or we kind of downplay the effects. Um, or we could, you know, kind of come through kind of relatively unscathed. Um, so I will go ahead and do um, Christina. Hello from Southern California. Yep, Melanie, I got you on the list. And, and totally the opposite of me, but we get along so well. Yes. And Malegros, I would say that's because the energies are very different. And you are probably slowing him down a little bit, which can be good. So I'm going to go ahead and start with um, Jenna uh, with the card. So this is Ace of Cups. Um, Ace of Cups is all about... That bursting emotion, really 
new opportunity to show to show love, to give love, to receive love. Um, it can be overwhelming. So make sure to check in with your energy levels and to take us if you can. Yeah, them wands. So. All right. Whitney, hello. Yolanda, first time follower. Um, all right, so if you are looking for a card, that's perfectly fine. I just do ask that you share this live feed out, um, either in a group and on your feed, anything like that. Once you do share, please hashtag shared, and I will get you on the list. Okay, Caitlin, the moon. The moon is all about looking within. Re resolving trauma, resolving um, patterns, really seeing where you are, what you've done in the past, and how can we move forward. Um, it is the card of Pisces. We are now where Mercury's retrograde is. So you might have a lot of things coming up. Um, a lot of things coming up from the past that you are really being called to dissect was the word that came to mind. So really, you know, kind of take a deep dive. To deep, take a deep dive in. All right. Um, Ashley. Hierophant. Um, Hierophant represents Taurus. Um, all about it's learning. It's teaching. It's getting that, getting that information from spirit and putting it into action. Um, it's traditional site Craig hello Jenna yes Lisa Whitney all right I'll get you there all right Aaron this one's for you um so if again if you are just jumping on hello and welcome I'm doing um some one card readings and if you share it out hashtag share and I'll get you a card Aaron, Seven of Swords. Um, I've actually pulled the, this is the fourth time I've pulled this card today in various um, circumstances. So I'll tell you what, I will message you afterwards and we can have a, um, a deeper conversation about this because, um, yeah, it's the fourth time I pulled it today. And I really, I'm just dying to talk about the Seven of Swords. And I don't have quite enough time to do it now. Um, Seven of Swords is, yeah, of really taking your words that aren't appreciated and taking them somewhere else. It's really kind of what I'm getting fr getting from, getting from the card. It can also be the that like lone wolf energy. Um, where you kind of stand out from a crowd. All right, Danielle. Kim, hello. And Yolanda, I got you. Hello from Maryland. Hmm. <coughs> Ew. So sorry. Okay. So Danielle. Two of Pentacles. Um, two of Pentacles. It's all about balance. And going with the flow. Um, at the beginning of the broadcast, I did talk a little bit about um, kind of surrendering and going with flow. Um, two of Pentacles is. Thank you. <laughs> um, I know there have been some issues with Facebook and audio. Um, I went through and listened to it on the replay. It was fine, so go ahead and um, check the replay. Uh, we're about 47 minutes in, so you can kind of pop in there. Um, Two of Pentacles is all about balance. Money comes in, money goes out. Not stressing too much when it's not there because it's going to come in. So really kind of go with the flow. Don't try to try not to stress out too much. 
All right, Melanie, you are next. Page of Cups. Pace is very artistic, very intuitive. So I'll say for you, um, hi Bridget, right now, really tap into what makes your heart sing is what came into mind. Um, so this is um, for Melanie, Page of Cups. What really gets that spring, that kind of spring in your step? What makes you feel joy? Do more of that, okay? This is for Melanie and Jackie, hello. Um, Allegros, you are next. Strength. Having that internal fortitude to face challenges with grace and aplomb. So, you, you know, uh, you mentioned you're having, you're starting a new relationship. It's going very slow and steady. And that is a really great, like, exchange of energy. There's no force. There's no forcing anybody to do something differently. And really kind of accepting that strength and working with it. Um, it also does repre represent the sign of Leo. So it really has that very courageous, strong um, fire energy. And being, you know, with an air sign and an earth sign, um, you know, the, that Leo energy can kind of bring that confidence to that relationship. All right. So Mary Lou. So Mary Lou, Whitney, and Yolanda. Um, if you do want a card and you have not had one yet, or I did not just say your name, um, please share the stream, share the live stream, and hashtag share. Okay, Mary Lou, the Empress. The Empress, to me, is that wild woman in the woods but on a velvet couch. She is creative. She is creation. She is Demeter. So she has, she has rule of plant, plants. Plants kind of came into mind. So I don't know if you um, like house plants or grow them or garden or any of that. Uh, Mary Lou says, why is this? So Empress is always one of those cards that, you know, kind of everybody really likes to see. Um, Taurus, Venus, all of those really good loving energies, those good nurturing loving energies. Um, so yeah, if you do, I don't know that I don't, you're florist, perfect. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm really seeing all of these plants. So perfect. Um, so you're really creating through the language of flowers. Um, all right, Whitney is next. Wheel of Fortune. Um, so we did a deep dive on Wheel of Fortune a couple episodes back. Um, Wheel of Fortune is you know, the idea that nothing in life stays in one place forever or even for very long. Um, if you are in a tough spot right now, um, it will be changing. It will be cycling through. Um, the card itself has, um, you know, different representations, different. Um, it has the four zodiac signs, uh, the four fixed signs are represented. And then we have different mythological um, kind of characters as well. Um, but with the, the wheel, just remember that wherever you are will, will change and good fortune will come. There's an idea of alchemy in here. So you can kind of nudge it along if you have to. That's kind of like what I'm picturing is like nudging like a wagon wheel and kind of pushing it on a little bit. Um, so this is, well, again, was for Whitney. 
So if you feel like that change is coming, just nudge it on just a little bit more to make it happen. All right. And we do have Yolanda. Um, so as on this one, uh, I am going to put my um, Facebook page link down in the notes. Um, if you do get a chance, um, if you like go like what you see um definitely you know go over there head over there um uh, drop me a little review a recommendation anything like that it really does you know kind of help you know me here um to book um more clients um akasha hello no problem jackie shared perfect um so what i will do um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and drop my, uh, drop my page in here. If, you know, you can go ahead and give it a like. I would love um, a review or recommendation if you feel called. Um, I do, um, I am out of Buffalo, New York. If you are local to Buffalo, um, I am actually doing a class this Wednesday. It is the, uh, my intuitive, learn intuitive tarot class. Um, it is going to be at, at Rising Goddess in Tonawanda at 225 Highland Parkway. Um, so go ahead and find me there. Um, you can also, like I said, um, book an appointment with me in person. I'm actually at my office right now. Um, yeah. And let's see. So we have Yolanda. Two of Pentacles again. So Two of Pentacles is again that idea of kind of going with the flow. And what's really coming through, through for you in particular is it's about uh, money and like material stuff. Um, don't try not to stress out so much and really trust that the universe um, kind of has something on the horizon for you and make sure that you are um, that you are looking for that opportunity when it comes. Um, I'm not sure how if that uh, is going to resonate or if that makes sense, but that's really kind of what's coming through um, for that with you. Okay. So coming up with Jackie. Oh, awesome. I got candles made. I'm real excited about them. These are the little guys. Um, this one is Sparkling Verbena. This one is called Celestial Vetiver. They smell amazing. Um, I worked with um, the owner, Jillian, of Smell of Fear Candles, local to Buffalo. Um, we worked... Thank you. Yes, Cynthia. Um, yeah, you took the intuitive tarot class as well. Um, so yeah, I just got these candles made and I am literally over the moon with them. So uh, Jillian at Smell of Fear in Buffalo. She's awesome. We sat down and had a, had a conversation about, uh, about essential oils and smells and I worked at Lush for years, so emotive language, like hello. All right, Jackie. Awesome, Yolanda started her own business, growth, so scared, but excited, absolutely. That is literally what being a business owner is, is excitement, but also being like nervous about it. Um, Jackie, you got the seven of seven of swords too. So this is now the fifth time I have pulled this card today. So I am going to definitely do some deep dive for this card. Um, seven overall. Sevens always ask uh, ask us to look within. Seven of swords, thoughts, our communication. One of the key words is deceit. 
thievery. Someone's trying to get something over on you, which it can be. Um, but it's also, um, like I said with Eric, kind of your words and your thoughts to someone that's going to appreciate them. Um, but what's really coming through for you is be upfront about it. Don't try to, uh, don't try to do it in an underhanded manner. Be upfront with your feelings and be upfront with what you're trying to do and maybe why you're disengaging with a certain person. Um, so that was for Jackie. And we have Monica too. Monica, um, I do believe you're going to be the last one. We're at 8.59. Um, I do want to thank um, everybody that's joined. Um, I do want link in here um, go ahead and head over to my page and you know anything you know that you want to say to me there um, all right so Monica and definitely you know three of cups divine arts there's also a Facebook group so if you are on the page and you love the lives uh, the group is more of the same plus um, there's really great discussions uh, discussion topics uh, for the group for the different topics that the shows are doing so if you are not a part of divine three of cups divine arts Facebook group pop over there um, request to join and we'll get you in uh, just as soon as possible all right Monica, Three of Wands. Three of Wands is all about looking ahead. You have that plan in place and you're you're waiting for that divine timing. You are waiting for that time to set to start that next. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you are waiting for divine timing to really take that step. All right, um, Joanne, um, if you are pulling cards, I, I am. Share and it got skipped. I'm sorry, I'll get to you. I will message you afterwards. Um, I do apologize for that, Akasha. Sometimes it happens. Um, I will go ahead and uh, message you. Um, as soon as I jump off, I'm going to go to my page and I'll message you, okay? Um, and Joanne, first, first time on, well, thank you. Um, I am going to suggest. Um, to Joanne that you go ahead and um, catch the replay you can watch right uh, from the beginning um, and if you do share that out hashtag shared um, in the comments here and get, shoot me a message on my business page divination station tarot and I will get you a card too since you popped in a little bit late I'll get you personally okay um, all right and I do believe Coraline is going to be coming up next um, so I will go ahead and jump off so she can jump on. Um, so Akasha and Joanne, um, expect a message from me very shortly. And thank you so much. I will see you next Monday um, at 8 o'clock. I am going to try to um, do a pop-up live and go over the Celtic cross. I am hoping to do it tomorrow. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on. Make sure you have your notifications on for uh, Three of Cups Divine Arts. We'll let you know when any of us come on live. So go ahead and um, keep an eye out. And I will be doing a deep dive. Um, I will be doing a deep dive of the Celtic Cross spread. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. And safe night.